MapReduce is a programming model and framework for processing large-scale data in a distributed and parallel manner, typically used in big data systems like Hadoop. It allows for processing vast amounts of data by splitting tasks across multiple machines handling large datasets that would not fit on a single machine. So what does MapReduce do? At its core, MapReduce is designed to break down a computational task into two distinct phases, map and reduce. It allows a program to process huge datasets by distributing computations across a cluster of computers. In the map phase, there is input splitting. The input dataset, typically stored in a distributed file system like HDFS or Hadoop distributed file system, is split into fixed size chunks, typically 128 megabytes or 64 megabytes in Hadoop. These chunks are sent to different nodes in the cluster. The system assigns these chunks to mappers or worker nodes, which process each chunk independently. There is a mapping function that the programmer defines, which processes the raw data chunk. This function takes input in the form of key value pairs. For example, in the case of a word count problem, the input might be a line from a text file where the key equals the line number and the value equals the line content. The mapper function processes each line and emits key value pairs. For example, word maps to one. The output from this step is a collection of intermediate key value pairs. These key value pairs are then locally written on the node running the mapper until all input chunks have been processed. This is intermediate storage. After this, the intermediate results are partitioned based on the key, preparing them for the next phase. Phase two is shuffle and sort. This is a critical phase in the MapReduce framework and happens between map and reduce phases. Once the mapping is completed, the output needs to be grouped by the keys. Shuffling refers to the movement of intermediate key value pairs from mappers to reducers. All values corresponding to the same key are grouped together during this process. Sorting happens concurrently, ensuring that the keys arrive at the reducer in a sorted order. This step is important because the reduce function often assumes the keys are processed in a sorted manner. Phase three is the reduce phase. Each reducer node is responsible for processing all values associated with a particular key. The programmer provides the reduce function, which receives the key and an iterator over all values associated with that key. The reducer processes these values, often aggregating them in some way, for example, summing values, finding averages, etc. The result is a reduced set of data for that key. For example, in the word count problem, the reducer might sum up all the ones associated with each word, producing an output of a word mapped to the total count. The final key value pairs generated by the reducers are written to the output storage, for example, HDFS, and this is the final result of the map reduce job. The output is typically stored in multiple files, one for each reducer. So what are the benefits and strengths of map reduce? Number one is scalability. Map reduce can handle petabytes of data by running on a large number of commodity machines. It achieves horizontal scalability by splitting both data and computation. Number two is fault tolerance. Hadoop's MapReduce provides built-in fault tolerance by replicating input data across multiple nodes and re-executing failed tasks automatically. If a machine crashes during a map or reduce phase, the task is reassigned to another node with access to the data. Number three is data locality. MapReduce maximizes efficiency by moving computation to the data. For example, executing the mapper tasks on the nodes where the data resides, a concept called data locality. Number four is parallelism. MapReduce can distribute tasks across multiple nodes, allowing for parallel processing of data. Mappers and reducers can run concurrently across a cluster, significantly speeding up large computations. What are the limitations of MapReduce? Number one is fixed job flow. MapReduce jobs have a rigid structure. The flow from map to shuffle to reduce is fixed. It's not well suited for more complex workflows involving iterative tasks like in machine learning algorithms or interdependent tasks. Number two is that it's IO intensive. MapReduce jobs often involve heavy disk IO operations as intermediate data is written to disk and then shuffled and then read again by the reducers. This can make it slower compared to in-memory processing frameworks, for example, Apache Spark. Number three is latency. The model introduces high latency making it less ideal for real-time data processing. 